Thank you for introduction. Uh, second. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Salim. I'm writing Kotlin in Kotlin uh, uh, at JetBrains uh, for a long time, and now I'm leading Kotlin Wasm. Uh, today, we explore some Im implementation details uh, of Kotlin Wasm, and I'm going to show you how we use some new shiny proposals. And I hope uh, it will be interesting and helpful uh, for developers working on Wasm VMs or languages targeting uh, WebAssembly. Uh, yeah, before we go uh, inside, let's uh, quickly look what is Kotlin. Kotlin is uh, a modern uh, statically typed language uh, with uh, garbage, collection, garbage collector. Uh, it uh, managed to be both concise and expressive. Uh, it has uh, a pragmatic mindset while rema remaining uh, el el elegant. Um, it has uh, a good balance be between imperative and function, uh, functional features. Uh, and one of its key feature is now safety, uh, what's uh, turned the billion dollar mistake, you know, now references uh, to compile time check. Uh, so uh, Kotlin targets multiple, uh, multiple platforms such as JVM, uh, various native uh, platforms like iOS, Linux, Windows, and so on. Also, we have uh, JavaScript backend and WebAssembly. Uh, so, uh, you can share code between all these uh, supported platforms, uh, but still you're able to, able to write platform-specific code when it's uh, required. Twilink is mostly JVM-based uh, with some integration with platform tools. Uh, Kotlin has experimental compiler plugin mechanism for powerful build time uh, transformations. Uh, for now, the widest adoption uh, of Kotlin is uh, on mobile. It's officially recommended language uh, for Android. Uh, server side is another popular use case for Kotlin. Uh, thanks uh, to great Java interop, uh, it could be easily used uh, for any Java. Uh, you can easily use uh, any Java JVM lib libraries and frameworks. Um, a few months ago, we announced Kotlin Wasm as a new experimental target. Uh, we built uh, the new compiler from sketch and targeting uh, uh, the next goals. We want to have uh, a fast compilation because we think it's very important to have under the second down trip. And to achieve that, we generate binaries directly. And uh, whether we're going to make it also incremental. We don't do much optimizations during uh, development builds, uh, but uh, we can use Binarian to optimize release builds. Uh, we want to have a good integration with hosts, for example, to avoid leaks uh, with cross-model links. Uh, we want to provide convenient and fast interop with host. For example, we provide uh, out-of-the-box declarations for many browser APIs, uh, so you can easily work with uh, any browser API, with DOM. And we want to have a small binaries. Uh, 3 kilobyte is size of uh, Wasm binary with, uh, for, for this example. Uh, more modern Shiny proposals help us a lot uh, to achieve the most of our goals. Uh, we are using uh, following uh, proposals. Oops. Uh, sorry, um, reference types. Uh, reference types uh, uh, introduces uh, basic reference types and instructions to work with them. It's already part of core specification and implemented by most of VMs. Uh, next is uh, exception handling proposal. As you can guess, it introduces something like exceptions and uh, a way to throw and catch them. Uh, it's uh, on phase three out of four, but actually it, it, uh, it is available by default in all uh, browsers. 
uh, extended name section introduces a dedicated section for storing names for all entities uh, what could have a name in uh, text representation. Uh, it's more like debug information. It doesn't affect any semantic uh, uh, of uh, WebAssembly, so it's supported and turned on by default by many tools uh, and browsers. Uh, next type function references. Uh, uh, the name speak for itself. It adds better type typing for function references and uh, the instructions to call functions by reference. It's on phase three. And last one, uh, but not least, the uh, garbage collection proposal. Interestingly, uh, the proposal has only one sentence about uh, garbage collection but it introduces high-level con concepts required for languages and runtimes with garbage collection, such as structures, fields, references, and so on. Also I in phase three. Uh, by the way, origin trail for WASMGC in Chrome is open for registration. Uh, so uh, using it, you can turn on WASMGC for your site, uh, follow the link for more information. Mm, WebAssembly evolves continuously and there are many new proposals. Some of them are interesting to us and we are more, uh, mm, uh, even more, we are experimenting with some of them. Let's uh, quickly look at them. Uh, there they are many proposals aimed to improve interop uh, with uh, external world. Uh, performance is important as well. Uh, you can say you can say now the disk space is cheap, network uh, is fast, but there is uh, use cases where size is still important, uh, for example, uh, in web. Uh, I'd like to highlight a few proposals here. Uh, first is component model, because I personally I think it's important for whole WASM ecosystem uh, to get component model uh, ready. Uh, next is multiple memory proposal because I it's, uh, it can unblock uh, some use cases, uh, uh, some interop cases uh, uh, right now without waiting, for example, component model. Uh, for example, uh, when we want to uh, interop be between models compiled by different languages, so you can somehow uh, manage uh, memory uh, and without uh, multiple memory it's uh, tricky because uh, uh, two languages uh, have to live in one memory space uh, what is uh, not easy some sometimes um, and uh, one thing what one for a proposal uh, what uh, I like is string ref proposal but uh, I'll explain it about uh, about string ref uh, uh, proposal a bit later. Uh, let's uh, take a deep look uh, at some Kotlin WASM implementation details. Uh, we start from Kotlin Any. It's base type for everything uh, in Kotlin, like uh, Java and object, but better. Uh, from Kotlin developer point of view, it has only three functions and no fields. But actually, in term of WASM, it's structured with four fields. So every instance of any has these four fields. Uh, the table field refers on the table structure for a specific uh, class. Now it is any the table. All instances of uh, any share one instance of this the table structure uh, with references to specific function implementations. Uh, virtual table uh, used for dispatch virtual calls. Uh, let's introduce uh, another class foo extending any with one more field. Uh, it was, um, so yeah, uh, in WASM we uh, extend any structure, repeat fields uh, from any, and introduce the new one. Uh, we also want to change some method uh, and uh, uh, add a new one. To achieve that, we introduce a new vtable and change the type of original vtable uh, field, uh, original vtable field to a more specific one to avoid casts uh, while we accessing uh, this vtable when we trying to call something from there. 
Uh, in the new Vtable, we change the reference to string uh, because we want to provide our own implementation instead of uh, uh, any one, uh, and introduce a new, f uh, a new field bar for a uh, new method. Uh, okay, uh, how to access fields and call methods? Accessing uh, fields is simple. Uh, say we have a local variable D referencing on instance of foo. Um, so we have uh, a stake uh, for values and instructions uh, to execute. Uh, first, we need to put uh, reference to the stake uh, using local get. After that, we uh, use struct get to access the field. It takes uh, reference from the stake, read field, uh, uh, and put the value back to the stake. Easy. To do a virtual call, we need uh, a bit more. We have the same variable D. Uh, with instance of foo, and now we want to call the method bar. Uh, we put d on the stack two times. Uh, first uh, is argument of uh, method itself. Uh, the second will be used uh, to reach the method. Next, we read the table field from the instance. Uh, then read bar from the table. Uh, and finally, we can call it using uh, uh, call ref uh, uh, and get uh, result on the stack. Nice. Uh, for comparison, a static call of function we now at compile time requires uh, only one instruction. Of course, if we need to uh, pass some uh, arguments, uh, we need uh, to push, put, push uh, these uh, arguments uh, on the stack before calling. Uh, Kotlin also has concept of uh, interfaces. Uh, it's uh, much trickier. Uh, let's say the same class foo is implementing interfaces, uh, timer, logger, and maybe something else. Uh, so we introduce a uh, new structure, itables1, uh, uh, with fields for each implemented interfaces. For each interface, we have a separate structure, uh, similar of uh, vtables uh, uh, at previous uh, slides, uh, with references uh, to actual implementations. Calling interface methods is uh, similar to uh, virtual ones, but need uh, slightly more instructions. Uh, here is comparison of different calls. It gives a good sense of cost uh, of calls, uh, but uh, in real life, uh, uh, it could be uh, a bit uh, mm, unexpected. You, uh, it's, it doesn't mean what every time virtual calls, uh, for example, five times slower than every static call, there is many aspects uh, what could affect uh, your runtime performance. Uh, let's move to string internals. Uh, most real world applications work with strings a lot, uh, so strings implementation may have a big influence on uh, the performance of the memory usage uh, of application. At the start, we had a simple naive implementation, which is just a wrapper over an array of chars. And, uh, and it's good both in terms of memory footprint and performance, except uh, concatenation. It's a very popular um, uh, uh, operation over strings. Uh, on uh, our side, uh, doing concatenation over default implementation of string uh, is not a good practice. Uh, and uh, usually languages have uh, uh, some special uh, type uh, to, to make uh, such uh, concatenations uh, like uh, string builder in Kotlin. Uh, anyway, it's uh, easy to uh, uh I, it is uh, easy to write such a code. Uh, uh, it's simpler to write uh, such code and easy to underestimate uh, the hotness of your code. Uh, so to optimize uh, the concatenation case, we changed the string representation uh, by adding uh, optional reference to prefix uh, and length. Assume we have uh, two strings, hack uh, and fast. Uh, if we concatenate them, we will get uh, an object referencing uh, on the left string and share uh, array with data uh, with, uh, with right one. Uh, it could be chained like this until we fold it. Uh, it's folded on demand uh, on all, all other operations. 
Now it's good in con con concatenation. Um, yeah, uh, let's go. Next, uh, and uh, let's take a look how we transfer strings to JavaScript. Uh, assume we have a string with hi. Uh, first, we copy data, data from the array to uh, linear memory. Next, we create a JavaScript uh, uh, uint16 uh, array uh, as a view of uh, this required part of memory. Uh, and next, we pass this uh, uh, type array to st uh, string uh, uh, from char code, uh, which effectively copy data again to get uh, JavaScript string. Mm. In the real world, uh, in real cases, uh, the string what we want to copy from Wasm to JavaScript could be uh, bigger than uh, our buffer. Uh, so we repeat these uh, operations, uh, copies uh, uh, chunk by chunk. Um, Transferring a string from JavaScript is similar. Uh, first, we copy data uh, to a linear memory. Next, uh, copy from linear memory to Wasm GC array. It's uh, different. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, uh, it uh, even worse because we don't have uh, special instructions for copying uh, from uh, memory to Wasm GC array or uh, backward, uh, and we just uh, uh, doing it in the loop uh, one by one. Uh, and uh, yeah, after that, uh, after we have a uh, 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 copy of data inside Wasm GC array, we just uh, use uh, this array as storage inside our uh, inside our Kotlin string. As you can see, we copy twice and it's far from being fast. We have a plan to wor rework uh, how we transfer strings. Uh, one more little thing about strings, uh, specifically about compile time constant strings. Uh, obviously, we intern all strings uh, we now at compile time to store only one unique ones. Uh, we store all bytes in data section. Uh, it's compact uh, to store. Uh, it's uh, uh, we, we need to generate uh, waste instructions uh, to, uh, to get this string literal at one time uh, because uh, GC proposal, with GC pro proposal we have uh, a dedicated instruction to create array from that data section. Uh, also we have uh, a cache uh, at runtime to share one instance of uh, same string literals uh, uh, within the whole uh, model. Uh, having a special case for waiting one is common trick uh, for languages uh, like Kotlin with uh, UTF-16 strings. We don't have such, uh, such a specialization yet. The optimization could be applied in general to all things and help with uh, uh, footprint inside binaries and footprint uh, at runtime. time. Uh, in general, uh, there are big room for improvements uh, in our built-in built string, but there is a better option. It is a string graph proposal. The preliminary result of our experiments uh, are promising, 60 times faster in interrupt micro benchmarks, and uh, up to three uh, times faster uh, on DB monster benchmark, which works uh, a lot with uh, DOM. Uh, okay, uh, let's move uh, out of. Uh, uh, let's move out and look uh, at what is already possible to do with Kotlin Wasm. Uh, uh, so it is uh, Jetpack Compose decorative UI toolkit in Kotlin developed by Google uh, for Android. Some time ago, a team inside JetBrains took it and made it multi-platform, and now you can write and share your uh, UI between Android, uh, this uh, Android desktop application, iOS, uh, and web. Uh, and on the web, it uses uh, Kotlin Wasm. It is a demo originally built uh, for Android, but run inside uh, the browser. You can follow the link on the top and play with live demo. It works smoothly. Uh, it shows a uh, high, uh, high frame rate. Uh, 
yeah, you, you can see how it's smooth. Uh, also, we working uh, uh, on debug experience, and you can debug uh, it other Kotlin sources, inspect local variables, uh, inspect uh, call stack. Normally, it works in Chrome and Firefox nightly. Uh, a, a bit disclaimer, because uh, 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 right now it's broken in the latest uh, Firefox nightly. Uh, yeah, if you uh, revert it uh, in about uh, a few weeks, uh, it will work uh, even in Firefox slightly. Uh, Bayant, uh, yeah, WebAssembly web is great technology, and you know there is a lot of experiments of using WebAssembly outside of browser. Uh, we think it he we think it has a big potential. Uh, on server sites, spe specifically lam lambda-like cases, workers, uh, edge computing, and so on. One of example of outside of browser usage is uh, Covasm. It's uh, a side project of uh, Sebastian Delos. Uh, Sebastian Delos, by the way, is a long-time believer of uh, WebAssembly. It's worth to read his posts uh, about web, uh, WebAssembly. Uh, back to Covasm. Co Covasm e is uh, goal of uh, Covasm is to explore server side and full stack development with uh, uh, Kotlin and WebAssembly. It leverages uh, WASI and, uh, to access to system resources uh, and WebAssembly component model for the interoperability. For now, we deploy Covasm application to Node.js because we need uh, a runtime that support both WASI, WASM GC, and a bit of JavaScript. On Kotlin side, we are going to make it possible to run uh, our binaries uh, in VMs without GC. Uh, and as soon as WebAssembly runtimes like Wasm Time or Wasm Edge uh, start supporting Wasm GC, we'll be able to target uh, these runtimes and implement uh, HTTP support purely using Wasi without any uh, involving JavaScript or Node.js API. Uh, depo deployment could be target Docker via its WASM support, uh, or Kubernetes, uh, Cloud, or Edge platforms. Combined with capability-based security and microsecond instantiation time, it's going to be a game changer. Uh, let's finish by talking about uh, what's next. I think the general availability of WASM GC in browser should happen soon, and it's going to be the next big step for both WebAssembly community and Kotlin Wasm. Uh, about Kotlin Wasm, JetBrains is a company creating tools for developers, and we think it's, it's essential having a great developer experience. Compose for Web is a primary use case for us now. But we're also excited about outside of browser usages and tools uh, and looking forward to uh, see Wasm GC support in standalone VMs like Wasm Time, Wasm Edge, uh, and so on. And that's it. I'm happy to answer your questions or discuss. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Zalim. Uh, uh, well, uh, do you want to ask the question, Anne? Wait. Uh, Timo wanted. Yeah, yeah, we can hear me. Yeah. Thanks, Zalim, for the great talk, and thanks uh, for whole uh, Kotlin Wasm team for this experiment. So I have a bunch of questions, so be prepared. Yep. Uh, okay, so the first one is about, so when you are talking about uh, calling a virtual method, I know that you are using uh, closed world architecture of Kotlin, so if you know at compile time that this is the only possible method to call in this uh, virtual chain, so um, have you optimized this in some way? Um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, it's possible to, to make uh, the virtualization. We don't do it uh, ourselves uh, now, but uh, actually Binarian doing for, uh, for us, it's very well. Yeah, uh, 
it's uh, understand quite quite understands quite good uh, uh, the code we generated and yeah in in most cases uh, it able to divertualize our course okay. yeah cool and um, I know that you're targeting JavaScript too so how is the comparison between WebAssembly uh, target and JavaScript one uh, good question uh, so both in term of uh, performance and uh, size, uh, it's uh, more or less comparable for now uh, at high level uh, because uh, in terms of uh, time performance, we have a bunch of benchmarks where uh, it shows, uh, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, what WebAssembly uh, uh, super super faster in. in a uh, few magnitudes, uh, uh, but there is uh, still some uh, benchmarks where JavaScript is faster. Uh, you know, JavaScript VMs uh, uh, developed uh, a long time and they're super fast, especially when you uh, say about uh, virtual calls, uh, especially if you say about uh, interface-like calls, uh, when, you, when you can get uh, different interfaces. In, ve in this case, uh, uh, JavaScript uh, uh, VMs uh, super fast. It's very hard to beat. Uh, yeah, but we will try. <laughs> okay, yeah, nice, nice to hear. And um, also, you've mentioned that um, I don't know. Co does Kotlin have a, a function with variable numbers of arguments? Uh, from point of view of users, uh, yes. Uh, but uh, at one time, it's actually just an uh, array of uh, something. Ah, yeah, okay. So when you are calling <laughs> uh, such method, you are calling it with a reference to array. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's all my question. Thanks. Thank you. Joel, can you? So. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering, you mentioned this microsecond startup time, and uh, there was this post by um, Fastly people, I think, by, by various people about how to to start up WebAssembly fast based on a snapshot of linear memory. There's uh, a library to do that. Uh, do you have a way to extend that to WASM GC? Uh, uh, could you repeat the question? You mentioned microsecond startup. No, uh, second, second, the uh, last part. Just oh, okay. Uh, so the snapshot restoring technique is based on copy is based on instantiating a linear memory with some fixed contents. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have an idea of how to extend that to WASM GC? Oh, um, actually, it's yeah. Uh, we don't think uh, about that because it's more uh, something what should be uh, done not our side, uh, but on uh, VM sides, I think. Uh, we, we can help, we can collaborate uh, on this case. Uh, uh, speaking about microsecond uh, uh, start type, uh, start time is more, uh, again, more about uh, virtual machines, uh, about how fast uh, they can instantiate uh, their model. We try our best to make uh, as little as possible at start uh, time uh, and uh, uh, virtual machines like WASM time, uh, they're actually able to uh, instantiate model uh, very quickly in microseconds. Uh, and the reason is because they trying to uh, doing things lazily. Uh, they uh, try to copy, uh, for example, copy things for data section on demand uh, and something like that. Uh, back to uh, GC proposal, uh, GC languages. Uh, um, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's definitely possible uh, to make a snapshot and uh, to restore uh, because there is uh, such practice in JVM world, uh, uh, even. Uh, you can even do that uh, in some Linux distributions uh, for any process. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. I don't see what primitives we have in, in WebAssembly that would work for that, because you mentioned the data section that works for linear memory, but I don't know how that would work for GC. Um, but 
I know. Uh, uh, WASMGC, I think, is a uh, very high level uh, in this term. Uh, you you just have a graph of uh, objects in uh, at runtime, time, uh, so you can walk from how this graph and uh, make snapshot. Why not? Uh, garbage collector actually doing uh, uh, walking from this graph, uh, so you just need to uh, walk again and uh, save uh, bytes uh, somewhere and uh, restore this uh, graph of objects. Probably. Timo wanted something to add? <laughs> yeah, I want to comment about your question, Daniel. So actually, uh, our colleague Andy Wingo has an idea in his blog post how to make snapshotting and how to support WASMGC with a wiser. Uh, you're familiar with a snapshotting tool? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, he has an idea how to snapshot or hold the heap into uh, WebAssembly GC array. So, yeah, you can read about it. So, yeah, it, it's, it is definitely possible, yeah. yeah so, yeah, that's my comment. <laughs> With existing, yeah. Yeah, but we will see. It's just an idea. Any other question? Well, I'll ask you a question. Uh, yeah. uh, first of all, thank you. It, it was really exciting to know about everything that you're supporting. I, I, I was curious how uh, you you work with the error hand, handling proposal, and like, how, uh, does it play into the? Uh, because I imagine the original exceptions in Kotlin are uh, uh, sort of built. Uh, keeping in mind the JVM architecture? Uh, yeah, uh, you mean exception handling proposal? Yeah. Um, we, uh, we actually don't uh, use uh, exception handling proposal very much. Uh, we, uh, we use only a uh, few things from exception handling. Uh, it is uh, uh, based uh, attack, uh, some abstraction, what uh, thing, what you can, you, what you want to throw and catch later. Uh, so basically, we use uh, uh, only instructions uh, to mark uh, uh, our code where we want to try and uh, throw and catch uh, something, uh, and we w we have one take uh, to throw uh, uh, and catch. Um, uh, so uh, other things, uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, many exceptions, uh, uh, and other things uh, uh, we just uh, uh, check in at runtime. time. We, we can have uh, a few catch blocks. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we we use exception handling proposal to throw uh, at some point and uh, catch in common block. And after that, we uh, using uh, instance checks uh, to understand in which uh, catch block in terms of Kotlin we need to go and uh, pr process. Uh, if we don't find uh, any catch block, uh, we just throw uh, this exception. Uh, actually, exception handling uh, allow uh, to do more. You can have uh, more tags. You can more catch blocks. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, even so, uh, this proposal uh, simplifies uh, our code generation because uh, we don't need to make some uh, difficult transformations uh, uh, required to, uh, uh, to to go and find the required uh, catch block through the stock stack of calls. Uh, we we just don't think about all this stuff. We just uh, throw somewhere and catch uh, in another place. Everything else is done by virtual machine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one more thing is, uh, it was really exciting to hear more about Wasm GC and uh, you know how you work with it. Uh, do you have any idea of like where in the standards process it is and like when it will likely go to phase four? Well, um, I I personally expect uh, what uh, it will go to phase four this year, uh, 
actually master of works uh, is done there. We have uh, uh, one, uh, uh, so we have support in Chrome. We have uh, very good support in Firefox already. It's right now it's uh, available only in Firefox nightly builds, but uh, uh, they already going to uh, to make it available in uh, other builds, betas, and release uh, still under the flag, same in, uh, as in Chrome. Uh, so basically, we have uh, at least uh, two, uh, two, two uh, independent implementations uh, in browsers. Uh, it, was, uh, uh, it is uh, one of important requirement to move to phase four. Um, there is uh, uh, some support in uh, JavaScript core, what used uh, by Safari, for example, uh, it's not finished yet. Uh, uh, so uh, I, uh, I'm not sure when uh, Safari support will be finished. Uh, uh, so t tomorrow we have uh, some kind of hackathon uh, to uh, to to bring this feature where where, where JavaScript core fully support. Uh, uh, of uh, Wasm GC Causer, uh, so please join us. Uh, speaking, ab yeah, so uh, in short, I think uh, phase four this year, uh, and uh, just uh, to uh, to say more, uh, also there is uh, standalone VMs uh, what started to support uh, Wasm GC, and it is very nice. Uh, there is the Wasm Edge uh, what uh, started, uh, and we even uh, managed to run uh, some simple application uh, w w uh, in Kotlin Wasm inside Wasm Edge. Uh, there is uh, some working started uh, inside uh, Wasm time, uh, so it's excited. Um, I think uh, next way next year we will have already support outside of browser for Wasm GC. Uh, thank you. Uh Adding to that sort of uh, idea of Wasm GC support, uh, Canada Honk asked on chat if, uh, you know, what techniques you use to detect uh, Wasm GC support on an environment? Uh, sorry? Like, uh, what techniques do you use to detect uh, if, uh, uh, if ah. that feature is available? Um, okay, uh, there is uh, actually a uh, library um, Wasm feature detection or something like that, what uh, can uh, detect uh, features uh, uh, around uh, WebAssembly, uh, and you can just uh, uh, t take this uh, library. Uh, it's under uh, Google at GitHub, uh, and this library uh, already support uh, uh, detecting GC support. Uh, in general, technique uh, what used by this uh, library is simple. Uh, there is some simple, super simple program in WebAssembly what uh, using uh, uh, feature what you want to check. Uh, it trying to uh, to verify this uh, binary uh, and uh, uh, if uh, uh, it, it, it this library doing it uh, under try catch so uh, it if uh, uh, this browser doesn't support this feature it uh, throw uh, webassembly compilation exception or something like this and library catch this and deciding uh, what uh, uh, the feature is not is not supported uh, uh, it's easy it uh, can at some point, it can g g say you what feature is supported, uh, but actually not fully supported, but it is okay. Uh, in case of Kotlin, we also generate uh, simple code, uh, what uh, basically doing uh, same things. Uh, uh, we're trying to instantiate uh, was a model uh, inside try catch, and we catch this uh, exception, and just to help uh, users, we uh, catch this exception, and uh, in this case, we're just trying to provide uh, uh, some information, uh, like uh, uh, what what probably happened, what do you need to do, how you uh, you should, uh, uh, what what you can do uh, to uh, turn on uh, something in your browser uh, to to make it work. Uh, thank you. And finally, uh, what are the compile times like for the JS backend versus 
the WebAssembly backend, are they comparable? Um, we, uh, I actually don't have uh, such numbers on top of my mind, mind but uh, my expectation is uh, uh, next uh, what uh, I think uh, uh, for uh, just a uh, clean build when you compile everything it uh, it should be close uh, because we under hood we uh, we use uh, common infrastructure right. we share some uh, uh, common overing uh, some overings is specifically written for uh, a specific backend but uh, JavaScript backend already have incremental compilation uh, so uh, when you change a small part of your application, uh, it's ca it can uh, recompile only some sub subset of your uh, code what affected by your change, not necessarily only one file you changed. Uh, probably it can affect um, some, some other files, but anyway, it compiles, uh, uh, process more, uh, less code, so compiles faster. In case of WebAssembly, uh, we're going to support incremental compilation, uh, of course, because, as I say, we want to have under one second uh, compilation time uh, in development. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. And